when I was a casual, I thought as a casual, I spoke like a casual, and I looked at boxing like a casual. But when I became a hardcore, I put away all those casual things. This is Michael Rogers, and welcome to Bodywork Boxing. Think it's a game till them things come out. I bang out till your brains hang out. Welcome back. It's Michael Rogers. Welcome to Body Work Boxing. Ryan Garcia and his peekaboo style. Wow. I mean, uh, the build up to the fight, I, I didn't play much into it because I was formerly on record known as saying Princess Ryan. I think I, I think Ryan at least deserved for me to either drop the princess or change the prin the princess into a prince after the performance against Javier Fortuna. Now. I didn't pay much. I didn't pay much attention to the build up because I'm not a Ryan Garcia fan. But everybody knows that you know the lines of, of Ryan Garcia draw conversations with Tank Davis and Devin Haney all day, every day. And so, um, you know, going into the fight, you know, I saw some celebrities in the crowd. I saw Stephen A. Smith, Jalen Brown, Draymond Green. Um, you know, he brought out some people. I seen Devin Haney. So he brought out some celebrities. He did a, a, a big number, like 11,000 fans. Um, you know, so he, he did bring some stars out. To see some of them people sitting in the stands, I, I can't list everybody, but to see some of them people sitting in the stands, let me know that, okay, he has some legitimacy to his star power. Ticket prices, all that other stuff, I don't know. I know the, the raw numbers, and that's what I went by. I just knew that, okay, He's, it's a big enough name for him fighting Fortuna, who people don't really know Fortuna. Like, I mean, I guess you might know a casual, you might know Fortuna, but people don't really know him. But he is known if you pay attention to boxing. Wasn't the best Fortuna. You know, he didn't look like he was in tip top shape. Um, the last time he was active, I seen him against Jojo Diaz. I can't say that Ryan did beat and perform better than Jojo Diaz did against Javier Fortuna. Javier Fortuna and Jojo Diaz went the distance. Mind you, so did Devin Haney and Jojo Diaz. Hmm. Interesting. So, uh, when I was looking at the fight in the first round, I saw Javier Fortuna clinching. You know, he was doing that veteran, you know, that veteran savvy stuff. You know, he, he didn't take long before the dirty fighting started. Um, right off the gate, Ryan Garcia looked crispy. He had a crispy uh, lead right here. Uh, he had a, lead, a left hook. The jab was lightning fast. You know, he commanded the fight right away. Um, the second round, I thought Fortuna did a lot of posing. Early on in the fight, I said, Fortuna is standing right in front of a person with a speed like Ryan a whole lot. His lateral movement was not there, and I think that is very critical when you're facing somebody like Ryan Garcia. You have to have some lateral movement. That speed and all that, and you know, the straight and then the hook, and the timing is based on you being right there where he knows where you're going to be. Um, the second round, Ryan started doing everything that he wanted. The jab looked great. The body, the body work looked great. Um, the third round, more dirty fighting from Fortuna. Um, and what I started to notice about Ryan is, I don't know what Goosen got him doing, but it was very clear that what his strategy was to clearly win the first minute and a half, it then tapered down and then either you know, kind of get on your bike, but be more defensively oriented. Because I noticed the pattern as the fight went on that Ryan was extremely more active in the first half of the round than the second half. And he was just, you know, hoping that Fortuna make mistakes and, you know, tiring Fortuna and, and testing out his stamina. In the fourth, he, uh, Ryan Garcia dropped Fortuna with a left hook to the body. And Fortuna looked like a lost puppy. 
I think the fourth round is one of the best rounds I've seen in boxing in a very long time. And that's kind of high for Ryan, but Ryan looked like a technician at that point. And when I speak about Ryan, I got to speak to this fact that he demonstrated a skill set. He demonstrated a skill set. He demonstrated that he can work off the jab. His check left hook was, was there. So he had an arsenal. He can go, he can change levels, go upstairs, downstairs. He was defensively responsible. Um, but I got to say that it's very easy to get really high on a fighter who can stop somebody in the sixth round. Or that has knockout power and gets the knockout done. However, even in their win, you can see all of the mistakes that they made that they were only able to get away with because of the quality of opponent. It's just like when Devin Haney fought George Cambosa. I mean, he put on a clinic, a boxing clinic with the jab. Same thing that Ryan Garcia did with Javier Fortuna. However, when you look at Devin Haney versus George Cambosa's there were a lot of tendencies that Devin displayed even in the masterclass boxing session that he gave to everybody to where if he was fighting somebody of a higher caliber, he wouldn't be able to get away with it. And I saw a lot of that with Ryan. Ryan, I, at one point in time, I said, man, Ryan, he liked to back straight back. I said, man, that's like a cardinal rule. He backed straight back. Like, he'll get his stuff off and then back straight back, you know, um... Leading up to the uh, fifth round, he got hurt bad. Um, Fortuna did. And Ryan had a devastating left hook on him. And in the sixth round, Ryan Garcia delivered a three-piece spicy. Ending it with a left hook. So, he become 23-0 and with 19 knockouts. Um, he looked better than JoJo did against Fortuna. He called out Tank, but he had some requirements. One was the Tank has to go to 140. He's never going back to 130, and I think he wants 50-50. I think Ryan went on to land 34% of his power punches, which, I mean, I guess that's a good number, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, he just clearly outboxed Fortuna and he did what he was supposed to do. I think we would be ride, riding on Ryan a lot harder if he went 12 rounds with Harvey or Fortuna at this point because we know that Fortuna is really a measuring stick at this point in the game. Um, the only thing I can say is it's, it's a lot of narratives coming out and I'll just give a couple. Right now, people are saying that Ryan Garcia is clout chasing tank. I say Devin Haney is clout chasing tank. And all the examples that people use to go against Ryan Garcia are all the examples that you can use to go against somebody like Devin Haney. I mean, it's simple and plain. And I'm and, you know, I'm getting to the point to where all these narratives and all this is just tiring. It's, it's consuming and it really does nothing for the sport. But... Word on the street is that Ryan Garcia wants Tank at 140 so that he can have an advantage. <laughs> so I'm like, I find that funny because people say that Tank is ducking Devin because even though Devin came out and announced that he has a fight in October, he said everybody's saying he can fight Tank right now at 140. And that that's what he should do. I mean, yes, granted, everybody wants to see the Devin and Tank fight, but... They are knocking Ryan for wanting to do it at 140, and then they're turning around and saying, but he can fight Devin at 140. Tank said that he wants to fight at 35. He feels comfortable at 35. It's, they said it on the Rise podcast. Tank said he feels comfortable at 35. So here we go, moving the goalposts. So just like <clears throat> all things when it comes to Devin Haney, you can move the goalposts all you want when it comes to Devin Haney, and everybody else have no wiggle, wiggle room. You know, what I believe is I never really wanted to see Tank versus Ryan. Um, I think that the skill set that Ryan Garcia displayed against Javier Fortuna, if he can stay disciplined, and that is the true Ryan Garcia, that one that we saw, that fought the way he fought, that used that jab, 
that had that hook, that maintained his distance, that didn't allow himself to get sloppy and over anxious, showed patience and a killer instinct and got rid of a man. That's that skill set is a skill set that, yeah, we would love to see somebody with that skill set in the name like Ryan Garcia fight Tank. I don't want to see it. I want to see Tank fight Devin right now since we know that Devin is fighting in October and he's in contract to rematch George Cambosis. I'm not going to be one of the ones knocking Tank right now for whatever he does. Uh, I'm not that high on the Tank and Ryan Garcia, but if it happens and Ryan can display the same skill set, I'll watch it. I'll support it. I'll buy it. So that's where I stand. I'm just not going to jump on the narrative now that everything that Ryan is doing is, is bad, but then we see the parallels in... Devin is over there under Bob and he can do whatever he wants. I'm like, man, I, I don't even know. I think that I'm going to end it with this. I think that people have been out here pushing a narrative to cater to the casual fans, the ones that they know they can win over and say anything and that'll agree with you and say, oh, man, and they might like your charisma and your style and how you tell jokes in between you delivering your boxing content. I think that the narrative has been pushed so long and the goalposts have been moved so long when it comes to Devin Haney now that now you have turned the overall consistency in perspective about a fight between Tank and Ryan into a more desirable fight because of catering to the casual fans. It's just like we know that boxing promoters and platforms, they don't cater to the hardcore. They cater to the casuals. That's why they put on the ones that make the best money for them, and that's how they do it. They don't always put on the best fight for the hardcore fans. When we see true, real talent, the best fight the best. They don't do it. But I think that content creators have gotten to a point to where they push casual points, casual perspectives, down to 8,000, 9,000, 23,000, 100 subscribers. How many people you got? A third of them are going to go around regurgitating and influencing boxing in ways that it shouldn't be influenced. But now when you want people to be legit, you want people to look at, analyze talent and analyze the business and analyze the skill sets and put it all together and say, okay, business-wise, this is how this can happen. And promotional-wise, this is what would have to happen. When you get them to start looking at it in the right perspective, they default to wanting something that only true, casual fans want. So... That's it, that's all. I gotta give Ryan his, you know, his respect and his, you know, just dues for beating Javier Fortuna. I wanna say that I think Joe Goosen and them, Joe Goosen and Ryan, um, is one zip when it comes to Reynoso and Canelo. And now we're gonna start seeing people's opinion shift on Canelo and Eddie Reynoso, and they're gonna actually start seeing Ryan. And once again, with that peekaboo style, when he go to the high guard, as soon as you think he's going to the high guard, he come around with that left hook. Let's just see if you're going to play that peekaboo style in real life and go ahead and fight Javante Tank Davis. Or is he still going to be playing peekaboo? Anyways, thanks for coming in and, you know, viewing the channel. And thanks for all the likes and the you know, the subscriptions, and we're still growing. I had, sometimes you got to take a break. In the last couple of weeks, I just had to be a fan because, man, a lot of the conversations around the boxing right now is exhausting. It's toxic. Uh, people only really want to tell the truth when um, it benefits their favorite fighter. And it's, you know, it get hard sometimes. I'm still here, you know. Um, I'm still... Uh, analyzing boxing, having fun, still loving the sport, and I, I'm still passionate about it, you know. Um, but here at Body Work Boxing, we don't take things for face value, we do that body work. All right, I believe you, but my tummy can't do Get down on your knees and tell me you love me. And I do what I do. He knows what I'm about to tell him right now. It's Mr. Keep running your mouth. That's what I do. Uh, I just feel like I'm the champ, and at the end of the day, I'm just, a, I'm just a fighting motherfucker. It doesn't matter. Inside, outside, I can just fight.
So I just feel like if we, if we get down to the wire and we gotta lock it up, I'm out on top. Fire, like I said before, ain't no safety on the glass, so I'm gonna